this past week's Raw was the Raw after the Rumble. A lot of alliteration there. So I had to recap the Raw after the Rumble to review the response. And there's one thing we forgot to mention in the Rumble recap. And we I'd mentioned that I said after the New Year's Day pay-per-view, well, they ought to, you know, change this thing up a little bit and screw Brock out of the title, then have him in the Rumble and have him win the Rumble so we can get back with him and Reigns, which is what they did. But And somebody brought up, and I was going to mention this, but I forgot we got on a tangent. Imagine that. There was no reason on how Brock got into the Rumble. And it could have been easy. It didn't. I know they had to be a surprise. They couldn't make an announcement or have someone on screen validate it. They wanted the pop, but couldn't it have been as simple as at the start of the night saying, well, one of our competitors in the Rumble has not passed the medical protocol, so we're going to be naming an alternate from our pool of alternates in the back. That's it. And then... If they had to, you know, they could name the alternate a little later on and then Brock could come out dragging his lifeless body, whatever. But they could have covered that, but it wasn't a major deal. But he just showed up, right? But anyway, on the Raw after the Rumble, Lashley and MVP were out first and you sh- Lashley's suit was incredible. He and MVP know how to come out and look like celebrities. And that's refreshing to see. They look like they got some money, right? Which they're supposed to, because they're fucking celebrities. <clears throat> they're sports stars. And MVP was hot about Lashley having to defend the title in because the, they've already announced the Elimination Chamber. So now he's got to fight five other guys, blah, blah, blah. We don't know who they are yet. Some are going to qualify later tonight. But anyway, so MVP gives Adam Pierce all kinds of shit about how they're treating... Lashley and then Bobby did one of his better promos. I've mentioned that he just doesn't have the uh, in his voice, right? To really be pissed like you would think a guy that looks like that would sound pissed, but he did one of his better promos and he was talking about how much better he was than Brock and he started getting on the fans and when he started feeling that, it started coming out a little better. Then here comes Brock. And have you noticed when when Brock was a rookie, all of us said, my God, he looks just like Dick the Bruiser from the 1950s, right? Well, 20 years later, he now looks like Dick the Bruiser from the 1970s. And I'm wondering if he has that 1980s Bruiser. Fuck, is he going to get a perm? Oh, God. Is, is You know, when at one point, Bruiser always had the big wide chest. But then the mud flaps on the side of his chest were approaching that of Abdullah the Butcher toward the end there. Anyway, in this promo, I've I've questioned before Brock having to do his own talking. And in this, it worked. Because he is naturally kind of a smart-ass, obnoxious fucker. And it works for him being a babyface in this position because he's being a smart-ass to a heel. He does sometimes ramble or back up and take a while to get to his point because he's not, you know, used to the public speaking as much as some people. But this one wasn't bad. He told, he he said since he won the Rumble, Lashley doesn't have to worry because he's going to pick Roman Reigns to challenge. But it's going to be a title versus title match because he wants to beat Bobby Lashley for the title first. And of course, and we can do it right now, right here in Swaziland, wherever they were. And of course, MVP then declined for Lashley. So now I'm wondering, since it seems like they, they did at least have tentative other plans for Seth Rollins. If he was going to be involved with Shane, if they're not going to fucking have Brock win this thing in the Elimination Chamber so it can still be title versus title at WrestleMania, but I'm not, I don't know how the fuck that... Doesn't Lashley and Rollins call for a rematch just on the basis of 
how fucking bleh the Lashley finish and was. Rollins. Um, is when they just had the goddamn Lashley and Lesnar or Rollins or and Lash- Reigns. Or wait, let, me, let me try that again. They were going to tie. See, this is so fucking confusing. Who's the baby face and who's the heels and who's mad at who? If Rollins was involved with uh with Shane, does that mean that Rollins and Reigns are not going to be they they just had that finish blah, and then Reigns kick beat the shit out of Rollins with the chair, but shouldn't he be in line to come back and do something to somebody? I don't fucking know. It's starting to get confusing. But Brock called Lashley chicken shit and they bleeped it out. So it actually got over. <laughs> they say shit and ass and apparently fuck on AEW and nobody gives a shit. But, you know, when you hear chicken shit on this show get bleeped out, it's like, ooh. Uh, so anyway, Pierce put Brock in the elimination chamber as one of the five challengers to Bobby Lashley to see who's going to be the champion of the one show to go to WrestleMania to fight the, yeah, blah, 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 right? That's where we are so far. The match at WrestleMania, Lesnar and Reigns, you think it should be title versus title? Well, that's what I said all along was the the good part about Brock coming out of the January 1st pay-per-view with the title was it should be title versus the if WrestleMania should be the biggest match, the main event should be the biggest match you can put together. And the biggest match that you can put together at this point, apparently is Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. And if it's for both of the titles, then that would put, make it the most important stipulation that you could put on the biggest match you can make. The only other thought I have about that, and I agree with you, is Lesnar's one of those guys that doesn't need a belt, and I'm not saying that to defend not doing what you just said, but I've come to think that Lashley is a guy that does need the belt. Not that he isn't good on his own without it, but the belt really does elevate him to kind of where he should be. Without the belt, I don't know what you do with him. But the problem in the corner that you have painted yourself into is that obviously there shouldn't be two world champions. Because that's just stupid. Absolutely. And secondly, with it, I'm not saying that Brock needs to have the title for the rest of his life or that Lashley can never have it again, but the idea that you've he's won it and then lost it and then has a chance to win it back, but doesn't win it back, but then goes to WrestleMania to fight for the other title. I it's again getting confusing and sloppy. And they booked themselves in this situation where they they they're trying now not to make anybody look bad. But in the process, somehow everybody looks some kind of bad when you're trying not to make anybody look bad. If you said it already, I apologize for missing it. Did Lesnar say anything at all about Heyman? Um, I don't think he mentioned him. Because before the Royal Rumble and everything, obviously Heyman turned on him, causing him to lose the match. I think we'll, we'll find out about that later on. I, I don't remember if, if he said anything about him or not. I don't think he did because he wasn't involved because they're they're crossing over all kinds of programs and angles with having to keep all these people interconnected. And they and if they did have a coherent plan, it was shot to hell with New Year's Day anyway. And now they're trying to get back to where they wanted to be. But yeah, 